congratulations. Uh, is that your best performance of the season so far? I think so. I think it's uh, pieced together. I think um, we've played well in parts and segments, um, not probably to the level that we played today. You know, I thought we played exceptional in the first half. We really were and could have probably, could have, should have maybe uh, been two or three goals up, obviously, for if it wasn't for VAR. And listen, offside is offside. So I said that last week. You know, you can't have your cake and eat it all the time. So, But I asked the boys to respond at half-time because the game was certainly in the balance against a very good team. And, and they did, the first 10 minutes of the... The second half, obviously, we put the game out of sight. Three big wins in a row. What do you think has clicked over the last three? I think they've started to believe a little bit more. Um, you know, it's all very well thinking you're a good team, but you know, you got to break yourself down. You got to actually work hard on a daily basis to then try and replicate that in games. So, um, we've had three positive results. I think in other games we've played very well and lost or or drawn. Um, but it's nice when you do play well and you win. How important has Mitch Duke been to? Yeah, he's been great. He really has since he's obviously come back in from yeah, our quarantine. Um, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. I got four forwards. You know, obviously I used three tonight with Juki and Bernie started. Kwame come on because he scored a goal the other day as well, the winner the other day. And I got Coxie as well, and Coxie's still a big part of it. So I'll, I'll rotate when I need to, and and certainly they will all get their chances to play. But Juki is is different to what we've got. Uh, Bernie Abini was mentioned as a, a Socceroos chance during the week. Do you think Mick Duke, when Graham Arnold gets his squad together, is someone that he sh should be considered? Yeah, I don't, listen, I, you know, I'm lucky I'm not a national team manager uh, one day maybe, but um, they have to pick the, what they believe is the best squad. So, you know, hopefully we can get many players in that group. Um, that means you're doing well. Vince, over to you. Yeah, thanks. Um, Carl, do you want many players in that group? Sounds like uh, the no, none. Might be, uh, away for uh, the final series. No, none. <laughs> nah, nah. Listen, I want, I want my. It's always a, a representation of your football club when national team come calling. All right, and I've been there myself, so I know. I've been a manager, and I know. As a player, it's an honour for you to go and play for your country. And I said when I did play for my country that when I become a coach, and I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to follow that dream, that I would never stand in the way of anyone going to follow their dream and playing for their national team. So the answer probably, the funny answer to you is no, but realistically, you know, I hope a lot of them do. Um, but that's not my decision. Yeah. Um, just on the performance, I mean, yeah, um, you mentioned it before, probably best of the season. Um, why? What clicked tonight that um, maybe hasn't clicked in such a fashion, uh, sort of, to this point? Yeah, again, you know, that's what that's what drives coaches mad and turns coaches grey. The reality of trying to figure out when sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and. You know, it worked for long periods today. I was disappointed probably with the last 15, 20 minutes. We got a little bit sloppy and lazy and, and turned the ball over too much. You know, the game was obviously put out of sight just after half time through clinical finishing and really good positive play. And uh, the last 30 minutes sort of flitted out, really. Uh, but that doesn't mean you go away from doing the things and the fundamentals that got you to that point. So that was a bit disappointing. We we could have scored four and five and probably should have. Um, but the game plan the, that I put on for the players worked. You know, they're the ones that play. They're the ones that should get all the credit today. Yeah, and um, just finally for me, uh, a lot of Wanderers fans were extremely frustrated, as you can imagine, in that first half with all the VAR calls, or two VAR calls and three offside goals chalked off for you. Um, is VAR yeah, good for football, do you think? Because that's a question a lot of fans are asking themselves at the moment. Yeah, you're setting me up for a right headline here, aren't you? Um, oh, yeah, do, 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 Right, we'll take that. Okay. Uh, do you know what? Listen, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen them, so I don't know whether they're offside, and I didn't actually get out of my chair because you don't know. What I would say with it, if it's offside, it's offside. Oh, I said this on Monday night when, obviously, we were lucky on the right end of a, a VAR call. They have to be right. How clear and obvious, you know, we talk about that with handballs and, and tackles and dangling legs and things like that. Offside is offside. Sometimes I look at it and the line is thicker. What body part is it? All of these things that the powers to be have to try and make sure they get right. I'm not sure that they are right. And with that, I mean, you can't take emotion out of sport, out of football. And every time you score a goal, the emotion is there. You want to see them celebrate. You want to see your fans happy, smiles on faces and people jumping around. 
but sometimes you can't because you just worry that it's going to get called off again and, and things like that. That's my only thing with VAR is it, um, sport is emotion. Uh, it's important you show emotion, good and bad. And I don't, want my, I don't want that to be lost in the VAR calls and things like that. And I tend to think it's slightly going away from it. Yeah, good day, Carl. Adrian Warren from Australian Associated Press here. Well done. Um, just, um, I know earlier in the season you've been saying that you've had a lot of players that, that weren't quite fully up to match speed and match practice. Do you, do you feel most of them are there now, getting close to full match fitness? Yeah, they're getting closer. Um, I think that's fair. Uh, again, how do you get match fit? You get match fit, one, by having a full pre-season, two, by them playing competitive games. And you always say that, you know, as a professional, you need maybe four, five, six games under your belt, uh, you know, of 90 minutes. You know, the, the guys here haven't played 90 minutes. You know, my two forwards played 60 minutes today, 65 minutes. Um, but that's the luxury of having a good squad. Um, but there's other, like my back five players played 90 minutes again today, four days after. They, so the young players, there's an expectancy. I need them to be fit. You know, the older players, I'll try and look after them a little bit in regards to minutes. Obviously, Doran's come back in today for Muchi. Muchi played his first 90 minutes in 15, 16 months. You know, so I wanted to protect him as well. Doran's comes in excellent. And Keanu just plays 90 minutes after 90 minutes. He runs about and he's exceptional. And that's me not involving Giorgio Doherty as well, who's an exceptional young player. So you know, I'm very lucky at the moment. Competition for places is very good, um, but it's nice when you get a win and a, and a fully deserved win. Well, I think that's Graham's seventh yellow card of the season already. Is that any kind of a concern or is that just part of what, what you have to tolerate in the game there, that he's always going to play on that edge? Well, I think if you look at the, if you look at the yellow cards that he's picked up, and I, I am a analytical freak as well sometimes, I do look at that and... I would say four of them for nothing, All right? By the way, one might be have been for a red card as well. So, um, again, it, it sort of evens itself out. I think that it was his first challenge today. Um, was it a booking? I don't know. Listen, referees have hard enough time as it is dealing with all of the 22 players shouting at them and obviously making decisions and they've got to get it right and the offsides and handballs and all that lot. So, uh, he needs to be aware of that. Obviously, if he does pick up another one and then gets suspended or misses another game, you know, we've, we're covered because we've got players. Do I want him to do it? No. Will I speak to him about picking up more? Yes. Um, but it's part and parcel of a midfield player's job. You've got to win the ball. You've got to tackle. And sometimes your tackles are off due to your timing. Um, but I don't want to take that part of the game away from any of my players. And last one for me, I mean, uh, I think you play Melbourne City next week there, which is looming as a, a terrific game. Uh, you're obviously going into that game with good form. How much would you be looking forward to that match? Yeah, it'd be a great game. Listen, there, I think everyone keeps talking there, the benchmark and the way they've played at the moment, the last three games, they've been exceptional. You know, Central Coast are the top of the table. So you have to give them credit as well. You know, they've got, on a, got off to a wonderful start and doing a great job there. So they're the marker. Obviously, everyone talks about Melbourne, rightly or wrongly so. I don't worry about what people talk about other teams. I've got to control my own business. But yeah, no, it's a, it should be an exciting game next week for sure. Thank you. Sorry, Carl, just one okay. final one for me. Great yeah. scenes at the end with the, the crowd in, in full voice. Do you feel as though you're coming more comfortable at home and maybe turning it into a bit more of a, a fortress? Is that something you come to grips with a bit as, as a team? I think so. I think they were brilliant. They were brilliant on Monday night. Obviously, they got to watch an excellent game end-to-end, -end, loads of goals, and they were brilliant again tonight. And our job as, as a club and a group of players and staff is... We have to energise them. We have to want to bring them back so they come out. Because when they're like that, they're, they're exceptional for us. And they help us. Like this last 20 minutes of the game, you know, when you're defending, you've got to put your bodies on the line for blocks and challenges. And listening to your own home supporters singing their hearts out is, is really, really positive. And we were delighted with them today as they've been away from home this year as well. You know, we went to Central Coast. We went to MacArthur. We went to Sydney. And we had a great following. So our job's to do our jobs on the pitch, which is what the boys are doing at the moment.